Hello, Patriots. Hey again, I'm Janelle. Last time I recommended a couple of shows that you can watch during quarantine. If you're still looking for something to do with your time, I'm back with another show that you should consider watching. Today's show is Mr. Sunshine. Mr. Sunshine is about a young poor boy from Korea who flees to America after the death of his slave parents. He returns to Korea years later as a captain of the U.S. Marine Corps. There, he meets a noblewoman during a time in which the country is under the threat of colonization, and the story unfolds from there. I did not expect to enjoy the show so much. The story is set around the 20th century and is based on actual history, following the independence movement of a group called the Righteous Army. It manages to make you feel all sorts of things, such as anger, hope, happiness, and sadness. There's also an adventurous side to the show, as you root for the characters to win back control of their country. There are five main characters, and you grow attached to all of them as the story progresses. There's a U.S. officer who was born as a son of slaves, a noblewoman who was a sniper at night, a rich nobleman who suffers as a result of his family's past actions, a hotel owner with an enchanting presence, and an assassin who was born as a son of butchers at the bottom of society. Every character is carefully thought out and well-developed. One thing I enjoyed about the characters was how they defied their fates and chose to become something more. I believe there's something we can all learn from this show. It depicts the hardships that the people of Korea went through at the time. You feel what they feel. Their desperation, their hope. All of this was going on in their country and no one helped them. One thing you can take away from watching this show is to not let history repeat and help those in need. In addition, the show is visually appealing. With it said in the past, Every small detail, from the clothing to the locations, as well as the stunning cinematography, tie the story together. The choice of music adds emotion to every scene that by the end of the show, simply listening to it will make you feel empty inside. Be warned that this is a very heavy show, especially considering the time period it is set in. The story starts off slow and may be a little confusing in the beginning, but watching everything come together is satisfying and leaves you wanting more. If today's show was interesting to you, you should definitely check it out. That's it for now, and thanks for watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to Cooking with Patriot Press News. I am one of your hosts, Serenity, and today Faith is going to be showing us how to make pancakes. Hi guys, I'm so excited to show you one of my family favorites. Okay Faith, why don't you show us what we're gonna need to make the pancakes. All right, so to start off, we need one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, three and a half teaspoons of baking powder, Next is going to be one teaspoon of salt, one and a half cups of milk, one egg, one tablespoon of white sugar, three tablespoons of butter melted. Okay, Faith, so now that we have all of the ingredients out, how many pancakes will this recipe make? So this recipe can make about two medium pancakes and one large, like pretty large ones if you're feeling extra hungry with it. Okay, Faye, so what's the first step to making the bowl? So we're going to start with the one and a half cups of flour. After that, we're going to have three and a half teaspoons of baking powder. After the baking powder, we're going to do one teaspoon of salt. Now this may take a while because salt doesn't like to come out very easily, but that's okay. So Ernie, what do you like to make for breakfast with your um, family? When I have breakfast, it's usually either pancakes or like waffles. I don't really like bacon or eggs. Really? Yeah. What about you? Uh, so pancakes, I also really like with my dad, we like chorizo. And then we'll also do breakfast burritos. After the salt, you're gonna do one tablespoon of white sugar. You're gonna need one and a fourth cups of milk. Then you're gonna need one egg. Okay, let's 
tablespoons of butter melted. Okay, Faye, so while we're stirring, do you want to talk about like any family traditions that you have, like revolving around breakfast? Well, one of my favorite ones that I do with my family is during Christmas time on Christmas morning, um, we have cinnamon rolls with our next door neighbors that we are really close with. That sounds good. Well, now that everything's looking really good here, we're going to move our cameras and go to the stove. We'll see you guys in a second. All right guys, so now we're gonna turn our stoves on to medium and we are going to pour whatever amount we want into our pan. I'm gonna do about a medium size to start with. And then while it's cooking, Okay, Faith, so how do we know when to flip the pancake? So when it's in the pan, you're gonna start seeing a lot of air bubbles. That's one of the first signs to show when it's ready to flip. One of the other ones is you can take your spatula and just run it along the edges and see if the mix sticks to the spatula, then it's not ready yet. But mostly the biggest sign is how many air bubbles are on your pancake. Faith, do you have any good like flipping techniques? Um, honestly, I don't know how much I would go off of this, but last time I did this, I just put like a little bit of, you know, flick of the wrist in it, kind of did the whole fancy stuff. Didn't turn out so well, but I mean, it could work if you just be careful, I guess. Well, Serenity, my pancake's looking kind of golden. What does yours look like? Mine is two. I think I'm going to flip it because part of my, my pancake is kind of breaking. So I'm going to flip it so the other side can cook. Because it's breaking when I was trying to move it. But it's looking very golden brown, which is what we want it to look like. All right, so we're about to plate our pancake. Um, Serenity, what do you like to put on your pancakes? Um, I usually like syrup, but today I'm going to put some bananas on it. What do you like to put on your pancakes? Um, see, I'm not much on the healthy side, so I like to put Nutella and syrup. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> all right, so now that we have our pancakes all made, we are now going to put syrup on them. So now we're going to try our pancake and tell you guys how it tastes. Okay guys, so we finished plating the pancakes and we tried them. And I wanna thank Faith for showing us her pancake recipe. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. This, this document is about how the game ain't Smash Bros. You know, people who own an N64, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, 3DS, and Nintendo Switch have played a Smash Bros game. There are, though, there are people who compete against one another for different prizes. Some of these competitors have a following and their followers watch them play the game. Smash Bros. 4 was the first game to feature downloadable content or DLC. The ongoing game, Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch, features new DLCs such as the standalone Fighter Piranha Plants, Fighter Pass Volume 1, and Fire Pass Volume 2. Volume Fire Era Pass Volume 2 so far includes Min Min and the upcoming character Steve from Minecraft. Steve will be released on October 13th. While many fans were excited by the, by the iconic mascot as addition to the roasters, others were her felt or conflicted over Mojang, the Mojang protagonist's inclusion. I thought it was kind of strange and awesome about a Minecraft character being in Smash. What do you think about it? Are you excited or are you disappointed? That's all the time I got for today. I hope you enjoyed the documentary. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go feed my cat. I'll see you next time on Documentaries with Eden Rum.
Pas de tidlig følge. So this is the school. So where's my class? You need help getting to your class? Yes. Please. <laughs> okay, let me check your schedule. Oh, okay, I can take you to your class. It's right over here. So, what's your name? My name's David. What about you? My name's Faith. I'm your link creator, and this year we are trying our best to create an environment just like you would have on campus. Cool. So, what class are you looking forward to this year? Oh, uh, I'm really looking forward to film production. You should be. Kalantar's the best. You know what? We're going to cut through the cafeteria as a shortcut. But before we go there, here's where your other classes will be. There's the Washington building over there. You can find the Lincoln building here. And the barn is more over there. Oh, interesting. A barn. We also have the football field and the STEM building that way. Oh, I didn't know that. That's all right. We don't have time to go over there today anyways. Plus, it's still being worked on. Wait, what? Huh, what? Okay, so here's your class. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, by the way. Yeah, no problem. Later, I can give you a proper tour of the place if you want. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Okay, I'll see you then. Okay, see ya. All right. Welcome, everyone, to Digital Film. It's gonna be a great year, a lot of fun. Let's do this. So, how was your first day of online learning through Minecraft? Oh, you know, it was okay. The teachers would talk, but everyone else is just sitting there, dead silent. It's super awkward. I kind of feel bad for the teachers. Well then help them out. Just speak up whenever they throw out a question to the class. So, was this all worth it? Is what all worth it? Making the school in Minecraft? We figure we can milk it for at least five segments. So yeah, definitely worth it. Oh, okay. Will I see you again after today? It's a big school. You'll be running into a lot of different characters. I mean students in the future. It's going to be a weird year. Yeah, that's 2020 for you. Welcome to Did You Hear? 
where I talk to you guys about crazy things that are going around the world that for some weird reason you just haven't heard about. Let's get right into it. So as you guys know, 2020 has been a crazy year and we have had some crazy discoveries like the giant spider or the giant bat, but scientists have recently discovered a dragon. A dragon, I know, crazy, mind blowing. Kind of saw it coming, but uh, this dragon was found frozen in Canada. It lived about 76 million years ago. That's a long time. That dates back all the way to the Cretaceous time period, back when dinosaurs were still around. It weighed 500 pounds. It is also known to be one of the largest flying creatures in Earth's history. It had the wingspan of 33 feet. That's like the size of a small aircraft. So imagine just a small aircraft just flying around. On another note, NASA has just said that there could potentially be life on Venus. The reason for this is because they found phosphine in the clouds. And I know what you're thinking. That's crazy because it's only the second hottest planet in our solar system. It has a temperature of up to 470 degrees Celsius, but there could potentially be life on there. The only reason why phosphine in the clouds is so important is because the only way that you can produce this is through industrial processes or through microbes, which are only on Earth. NASA already said that it doesn't belong there, so there could potentially be life or aliens living in there. Who knows? Lastly, there will be a blue moon on Halloween, which is actually pretty rare. There hasn't been a blue moon on Halloween in 19 years. Most people, they think that it's a bad omen, and some believe that it's actually the end of the world, which is, it's a lot. And I know you guys have heard that the world was going to end in 2014 and 2016, but who knows it's 2020 so anything can happen i mean we found a frozen dragon so who knows less than a month later there will be a blood moon which some people think that that's the beginning of the end i personally have no idea i didn't even know a blue moon existed so well that concludes today's episode for did you hear um thanks for watching uh everybody have a nice day see you next time Hey, what's up, you guys? Episode two, Romania, with your host, Riley yourself. My new special guest is my boy, Kowali Payne. Everybody give it up for him. Yes, sir, y'all. What's up? what's up, my boy? Yeah, How you doing? Doing good, bro. How about you? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Living life, living life. You know, this quarantine yes, stuff is crazy, but it is what it is. So, yeah, man. Yes, so, I know, I know a little segment, everything like that. I know you came from Paloma, so with the... This being a shoe show, how, like, what is the difference between Heritage and Paloma? Like, when it comes to shoes and stuff, shoe game type stuff, what did you, what are the differences you see? All right, so I'm going to keep it a buck. Heritage, all you see is Vans. Mm -hmm. And then, like, with some outliers like Riley who got some Nikes and stuff, some Jays, but Heritage is just straight Vans. Uh -huh. And Paloma, now that I think about it, I don't even know what type of shoes they be wearing. That's Paloma for you. Like, they be wearing like off brand shoes outside of like the basketball players and stuff. Like, we wear yeah, yeah. and stuff. Basketball shoes. But I swear, in every classroom, there's like 75% of the people at Heritage wear vans. It's yeah. the craziest thing I've ever seen. But yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I. That's my analysis. Like, you know, me, I'm, I'm, I was born and raised in LA. So, like, yeah, when I'm, it's kind of different. I will say it was kind of different out here. It's more like, like you said, bands and stuff. Like when I lived in LA, it was a lot more J's and other stuff, but I like it out here though, for sure. Like it's much more chill and everything like that. And like the different styles, like when it even comes to clothing and just a different style of differences. So yes, it's much more diverse and things like that. So why do you think bands are pretty popular heritage? Mm. I would, my best guess would have to be that they're easily accessible. They're comfortable and they're just really good in like style. Like they're even like the richest people on the planet will be wearing bands. So I think that it's like 
you can do like a good middle because we live in a middle class area like there's a good middle class shoe because they're not too expensive they're not cheap but they're good quality shoes so i think that's where the popularity comes from sure for sure yeah yeah, yeah. getting back into the shoe topic i got a couple <laughs> questions for you man i know you i already answered know you like some asking and stuff like that so what what is your favorite style of shoe like if you were to pick one favorite style what is your favorite style of shoe that is that's that's hard that's hard mm, i would have to go with yeah, there's two i like the yeezys and then i like the retro one man like those mm. it's clean man yeah retro one is classic I then i like red that. one like, like you got the og oh, ones oh, and then oh, yeezy Kanye is iconic what is your favorite colorway like if you were to have like a certain color what is like i heard you saying the bread ones all this different stuff like you have shattered backboards what is your favorite colorway you could say of each it doesn't even matter, but uh, the shoe likes. I like the I like I like the cream um Yeezys, and then I like the the royal blues, the royal blues ones. Those is clean. Oh yeah, those are clean. Royal blue ones, yeah, those are those are sick. I'm not gonna lie, those are real hard. I was just in Cool Kicks the other day in LA, Melrose Ave, and yeah, those are going for a grip. How do you oh how do you feel about the prices on these shoes now? Now now they like you could literally spend on one pair of shoes can buy a car. Like what is what is? I know you said you're. You like hey. stuff. I'm gonna keep it a buck. These shoes is expensive. Yes. I could be spending my money on this thing called Forex trading. Get you Fast. a lot of money. Fast. But you wanna know about talk to me, hit me and Riley up later. Anyways, but shoes going for 350, 250, 400, 500. Just for some shoes you're gonna mess up. Like me. Facts. I, I'm cool with some van, some Adidas running shoes, some Nikes, like some slides. I, I'm cool with Nike slides. Like I, don't, I like looking at shoes, but I don't be buying shoes like that. I ain't got that type of bread yet, but I'm gonna get there. Forex trading, but anyways. Also, what is? And I know you hoop. I know we hoop, and I asked. I know this in the last episode. What is your favorite hooping shoe? Like to play basketball. What is your favorite basketball shoe? Dang, that's hard. That's hard. Shoot, I'll be going, I'll be bouncing back and forth from Adidas and Nikes, but the last shoe I hooped with was um the Paul George um 2.5. Oh, like, I like I got the Fresno State one, same colorway. Mm-hmm. It's the same colorway as um as our team colors, the red, white, and blue. Well, it was mm-hmm. just red and no, it was red and blue, but I like those a lot. They're comfortable, yeah. and you can move fast, not too heavy. You got a little bounce to them. I but agree. I also like the Adidas Boost that comes with the Adidas. So, but I'm gonna have to give Nike the edge right now. When it comes to the, when it comes to the, sh- the shoe and everything like that, yeah, I, yeah. I honestly, I 100% agree with you for sure. Like, there's no doubt that like I've always rocked like different type of shoes. Like this season, I have Pumas, these new Puma. Uh, Hoopa shoes that came out. Got these curries. I've never played in curries, but I'm customizing different things like that. So it's it's, it's, a, it's a big, it's like a big variety of shoes that you can pick. And it's crazy because a lot of shoes that like Puma and Converse are coming out with hooping shoes, basketball shoes that aren't really like used to it. It's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. So I know that we've been hooping. I hear it just, we're, we're hooping, we're on the basketball team and everything like that. But I know that you are starting football this year. Right, and you're gonna be playing a heritage. I know you guys actually have started doing workouts at Heritage. So how does it feel to be the first group to be at Heritage as a whole on the field? Well, it feels it feels good to be back at school after like the Corona and the um, and boot camp and all of that. It feels good, cause, but. I think we're gonna have to um, implement some of the social distancing, like in the practice area, so like we can keep everyone safe and still be able to get a good practice and kind of similar to what we did at boot camp. But sure. I'm always up for the challenge, and it feels good to be back on campus and to finish out my senior year, trying new sports and stuff, and become a part of another family and continuing, continuing to be an athlete like I love to be. It feels good. I like to hear that. I like to hear that. I do. All right, you guys. That was episode two. We're out. All right, Kuali. See you on to the next.
Thank you.